Assalamualaikum sir. Assalamualaikum salam. Sir, um tangga? Ah, mandi tangga sir. The join menit itu tangga. Sir, good afternoon sir. Engkau sir. Ah, sir, um join mandi sir. Ipa ulah mandi ruang ya. Sir, mandi tangga, mandi tangga. Ada, unmute pon ya. Okay sir. Sir, mandi tangga, unmute pon ya. Okay sir. Hello. Hi Shankar. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Oh, good welcome, morning. sir. Welcome, 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 sir. Welcome, sir. <laughs> For you, it is good morning. <laughs> yes, it's um, it's uh, ten, almost ten. Ten oh, o'clock. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Hi, Sabita. How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm fine, Shankar. How are you? How good, is your holidays? Good. Yeah, it's, it's it's it was good. It was good actually. So we are meeting A probably after ago. two decades. Huh? Yeah, after two decades, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's very, it's a very long time. Huh? Time is flying. Yeah. <laughs> we have grown older. <laughs> um, I guess I have not yet. Uh. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, you know, very young. Sure. <laughs> my my MSc, uh, I mean my roommate, probably you know him, Rajavel. He told me uh -huh. once, as long as you wear jeans and uh, trainers, you are absolutely young. So I'm still maintaining that uh -huh. definition of being young. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so, but in knowledge, you have grown much. So I am uh, referring to that. Oh, probably, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm not so sure. <laughs> So when did you move but to sure. Trinalveli? When did you move to Trinalveli? I thought you were in Periyagulam or somewhere. I don't remember. You, yeah, you I worked there. Um, before three years, I got here. Right, okay. And I joined, because uh, I joined uh, Sadakutilapa College, I got a vacancy there and uh, I joined the college. So we shifted here before three years. Yeah, right. Okay, fantastic. That's fantastic. You know... <laughs> You are much closer to my parents than than myself, you know. Oh, <laughs> my parents. So I think they are probably in Shanti KT. Nagar. KT Sinagar. Oh, KT Sinagar. Surely I want to visit them, but yeah, because I of mean, this pandemic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure. I mean, they will be. They are there. I mean, my sister lives. Uh, my sister is basically she lives in Tutukorin, but at the moment she lives with my parents um, because. My oh. nephews are young and they are bored in Tutukorin, so they, they, they live in Trinalveli with my grand with their grandparents. So, so yeah, good. I'm very happy. I'm absolutely pleased <laughs> to see you and um, contact you. I who oh, else? Sure, can, the pleasure is mine. Vina, Chalakshmi. Someone if someone wants to talk. Uh, uh, Probably we may give time at the end of the webinar, so yeah, not yeah. now. <laughs> Why not? Good. So who else gave this seminar? Uh, Ganesh, I, uh, I, Ganesh. Ganesh. Yeah, yeah. Our friend Ganesh. He gave on tenth. Yeah. 10th. He remember you. He remembered you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. Uh, also, John also joined joined the webinar from Chile. Is he online? Ah, uh, no, no, not now. On tenth, uh, he joined. Ah, right. Okay, 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 okay. I I spoke with John a few times before, and I haven't. Oh. Um, um, yeah, I mean he's in Chile, and uh, yeah, I think you can contact uh, Thirumurgan. Probably he will be happy to give. A <laughs> Sure, but uh, I got the message that uh, from Swarna, he was not answering anybody's email, so I didn't contact him. Actually, I got the email from Ganesh uh, Thirumurugan as well as uh, he was working in Trivandrum. No, Thirumurugan. Yeah, he is still he is still working there. I guess he is still. I haven't um, uh, seen him for a very long time. I I met both Ganesh and uh, I met Ganesh and Thirumurugan. Who else? Subramani. Then who else? Subramani. Yeah. Everybody I in IIT, you met them in the IIT Madras. Yeah, IIT Madras. We met in IIT Madras because I organized a Indo-UK um, 
sort of workshop uh, so yeah okay, okay yeah i heard from ganesh that you all met also swarna also told yes swarna did she come i forgot no no she didn't. no no uh, she didn't attend the iit madras but uh, when i talked to her she told that uh, you all met there yeah 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 swarna and also you all like, yes. have met her. yeah yeah good good it's 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 great pleasure so how many participants 73 wow that's, that's uh, more than lot. 400 has registered for the webinar shankar oh wow okay that's a that's a, <laughs> that's a large number huh yeah so what are these um, students are they undergraduates or postgraduates or research students what's the all the students uh, we welcomed all the students our target audience was uh, from physics material science biology chemistry research scholars faculty members so right. we invited all of them because uh, since uh, nanoparticles not only for us uh, it is being used in material chemistry as well as the physics students so Absolutely. it might be helpful for them so only we invited them that's that's really good that's really good so why did um So, do you have a research department in uh, Sadakatullah? Yeah, certainly. Nayan research departments. Right. Okay. Okay. They are having good. Nayan research departments, and chemistry is one of the research department. That's fantastic. And uh, many research scholars are doing under uh, in our department mm -hmm. are pursuing uh, research. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I mean, uh, I aim to finish somewhere around you know forty-five to fifty minutes. Okay, not more than that. Then probably we can have it. No problem, guys. Uh, sure, sure, sure. No problem. If you want, I can reduce the number of slides or just skip some slides. Um, just let me know when. No problem, you Shankar. You can take your own time because uh, everybody is uh, eagerly waiting for your seminar. So no problem. You can take That's your own fine. time. I mean, so we have given. <laughs> I don't want to bore them. No, forty-five <laughs> minutes is the optimum time scale for for a uh, no good problem, understanding no and good, good discussion. Probably, I'm happy to sure, have sure, sure. quite a long discussion. I have, yeah. Sure, sure. The participants will be ready to ask questions also because they will be more interested in the field of nanochemistry. So certainly, yep. they will be ready to ask questions. absolutely absolutely So, how is the weather like in Trinal Valley? It's so hot. <laughs> it's not like our place because it is uh, near Kodaikanal, no. So, it will yes. be so cool. But here, <laughs> the climate is very much hot. You are from Periyagulam, right? Yeah. No. Periyagulam. Uh, Badlagunda, actually, Badlagundo. Ah, right. On the way to Kodaikanal, so right. our place will be so cool. but uh, here the weather is very hot so when i arrived here i um, uh, i suffered a lot to manage this weather yeah it's it's eternal way but but let me tell you <laughs> once you leave such a warm weather and say in europe for example they they really <laughs> really miss sun and the warm weather you know <laughs> you ask anybody you are okay you are saying that yeah no i mean because we don't appreciate sun so much because we have it every year um, here because of lack of sun we have lots of vitamin deficiency like vitamin d deficiency for example all asians here in in the uk for that matter whole of europe we have to take um, 
vitamin D supplement because we don't produce enough um, sure. vitamin D because we don't have enough sunlight. So, yeah. Sure, sure. We don't appreciate. Uh, excuse me, Shankar. Excuse yeah, me. Can stop. Uh, Kaja, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Waalaikumsalam. 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 Hello. Principal, sir. Huh? Oh, your yeah, principal is sir, here. Sankar, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hello. Principal, sir, shall we start? Yes, we can. Please. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, ASM, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, we can start. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So, I thank Allah for giving me this moment. Alhamdulillah. Everything in the heavens and earth glorifies God, says the Holy Quran. Assalamu alaikum and uh, pleasant good afternoon to all. I am Dr. M.A. Sabita. Assistant Professor and PG Head, Saratulapa College. I am glad to welcome one and all for the international webinar on synthesis and catalytic applications of supported metal nanoparticles organized by PG and Research Department of Chemistry, Saratulapa College, Trinalveli. On behalf of our management, principal, vice principal, PG and Research Department of Chemistry, I welcome one and all. Let us begin the program by reciting few Quranic verses. I call upon Dr. Imran Khan, Assistant Professor, to recite few versions from Holy Quran. Sir, please. Thank you, Madam. Bismillah <clears throat> rahman rahim Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman rahim Maliki Umiddin. إياك نحمد إياك نستقيم إذن السرات المستقيم سرات الذين نحمد عليهم خير المعلوف عليهم ولا اللهم آمين. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate and most merciful. All praises for Allah, Lord of all worlds, the most compassionate and most merciful, Master of the Day of Judgment. You alone. We worship and you alone, we ask for help. Guide us along the straight path, the path of those you have blessed, not those you have displaced with or those who have astray. Alavatu Arlalam, Nigaratan Buryon, Mahalah, Aludikin, Anatu Pogolum, Hilatar in the Chahinu Mahi Allah, who did it, Avan Arlata Alalan, Nigaratra Kibudion, Avani Nyayati Punalin, Adibudi Mavan. Ingal Rachaha, Unne and Angal Vanangiro, Unideme, Nangal Udavim Tedigro. Ni Ingale, Neran and Valley and Artuayaka. Evergal in Midi, Ni Arul Purindayo, Atahur and Valley and Artuayaka, Avali, Unkobatrkulan or Holode the Malle, Valit Tower or Holode the Malle. Sadakala Valley. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I request Dr. A. Syed Mohammed, sir, research and UG head. IQSC coordinator to welcome the gathering. Please, sir. Uh, thank you, madam. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon to all. I deem it a great privilege to welcome the today's resource person, our college principal, Dr. Mohammed Sadiq, sir, vice principal, Dr. Sayed Mohammed Taja, galaxy of intellectuals, faculty members, HODs, my dear colleagues, those who are here for this national webinar on synthesis and catalytic application of supported metal nanoparticles organized by PG and Research Department of Chemistry. First of all, I would like to embark my speech by thanking the Almighty, the most beneficent and the most merciful. Without him, nothing is possible. I would, I wish to extend a warm welcome to our beloved correspondent, al Hajti Fadu Rabani, the visionary of Sadhguru College, who is all the time a moral support to us to continue our journey in the right path for the betterment of the society. I would like to take this opportunity to express my deep sense of appreciation to our executive committee members to this occasion. I would like to wholeheartedly welcome our beloved principal, Dr. Mohammed Sadiq, sir, he is here to inspire us to with his presidential address. My heartfelt welcome to Dr. SMA Sayyid Umar sir, Vice Principal, the Control of Examination, the Deans, the Barsar, and the Deputy COE, the HOD of PG Department of Chemistry and Organizing Secretary, Dr. M. Sabita, and our department faculty members. 
I would like to thank each one of you for joining this national webinar. I feel great proud to say that two webinars have been organized by our department so far and has chronicled huge success. The theme of this webinar is based on recent trends, challenges, and opportunities for multidisciplinary research approach. One among them is nanoparticles. It will focus on catalytic application of supported metal nanoparticles. Even though this webinar is a marker of the success of our institu institution, it also allows us to meet one of the brilliant minds of the country, which became the chief guest for this occasion, that is none other than Dr. M. Shankar, who is working as a lecturer in physical chemistry, Cardiff University, United Kingdom. On behalf of Department of Chemistry, I welcome you, sir. I bid a very warm welcome to the participants who took out their valuable time and join us today to be a part of this webinar. We are honored to have you all with us. I ensure that this webinar will create some beautiful memories and induce yourself towards to the research in the nanoparticles. Without taking much of your time, permit us to start the program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your enthusiastic words. Now I request our beloved principal, Dr. M. Mohammed Sadiq, sir, to deliver the presidential address. Sir, please. Thank you. Am I audible? Ah, yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. Uh, in the name of uh, Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, if we could count up the favors of God, never would we be able to number them. For God is all forgiving and most merciful, says the Holy Quran. Respected chief guest of this fine occasion, uh, Dr. M. Shankar, lecturer in uh, physical chemistry, Cardiff Catalysis Institute, Cardiff University, United Kingdom. And uh, really, I was amazing to uh, just go through his uh, uh, resume. He was awarded prestigious, highly competitive, Marie Curie Intra-European Fellowship for Career Development. Such a wonderful uh, uh, personality is in front of us, getting the valuable and uh, the highest uh, uh, competitive uh, Marie Curie uh, Intra-European intra Fellowship for uh, career development. Really, it's a great achievement, sir. We uh, uh, we pray the God, pray Allah Almighty to get so more uh, fellowships and uh, credentials in your future career. Uh, his uh, task is actually converting renewable waste materials to useful compounds. That is a basic aspect of uh, his research. Uh, really, it's a, it's a great task that we have to convert the waste material into usable components. That is the need of the hour, need of the day. In that direction, our uh, chief guest, uh, Dr. Sankar, is actually uh, trying to fulfill that requirement to the whole world. Uh, respected uh, uh, Vice Principal of our college, Dr. Sayed Mohammad Khaja, respected uh, head of the department of uh, PG Chemistry, Dr. M. A. Sabita, respected IQAC coordinator, Dr. Sayed Mohammad, respected Kandorva of examinations, uh, Dr. Abdul Kadar, Deputy Kandorva of examinations, Dr. Kanam Taya, respected members of the uh, PG department of chemistry, Dr. Brilliance Revin. Dr. Imran Khan. Imran Khan, uh, actually, uh, he was awarded uh, with the uh, Indian National Science Academy Award uh, Fellowship uh, for the year 21-22 uh, uh, as an INSTA visiting scientist. He has been selected as an INSTA visiting scientist for the year 21-22. And really, we are very proud of uh, Dr. Imran Khan for uh, getting such a wonderful fellowship. Uh, it's, a, it's a it's a pride to the institution, and really I feel I, I feel very happy that that the total team is working very hard towards towards the upliftment of the the, 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 the PG department of uh, chemistry, and really uh, all the members of the PG department of chemistry are very sincere, hardworking, and I pray Allah the Almighty that their total endeavors actually uh, bringing the whole institution in a in a greater manner. And today we are going to uh, uh, have a very good uh, discussion with our uh, chief guest, Dr. Shankar, on synthesis and catalytic application of supported metal nanoparticles. 
so i hope it could be a very useful information to all the chemistry faculty members as well as the chemistry research scholars and students of our college and i i actually i also welcome the the faculty members our uh, from our friendly institutions the students from friendly institutions all of that and here i hope that in the in the participants there are so many researchers research scholars and uh, friends of uh, dr sankar and uh, our uh, dr sabida is also there in the in the group i just uh, noticed because of uh, from their uh, smiling one another in the in the meeting anyhow i am i am very proud that this uh, webinar is a meeting point of the global uh, researchers in chemistry thank you thank you very much thank you sir thank you for your encouraging words you are always there to support us thank you sir and now i call upon our vice principal dr sma syed mohammed kaja sir to felicitate the gathering Good afternoon. <clears throat> Salam alaikum. Dear mate, you will show the peace and mercy to all of us. I begin in the name of Almighty, the most gracious and the most benevolent. Respected principal, Dr. Mohammad Shadi, respected resource persons, the legend, Dr. Yam Shankar, the lecturer in physical chemistry, School of Chemistry, Dietary Patrick Institute, Patrick University, United Kingdom. Respected the head, the PG Department of PG Research Department of Chemistry, Dr. Shabita, respected head and ITC coordinator, Dr. Syed Mohammed, respected Dean of Arts, Dean of Science, controller of examinations, safety controller of examinations, and respected Dean Research and Development, Dr. Basha, respected ISO coordinator, Dr. Ayatri Janis, respected faculty members, William Revin, and Dr. Imran Khan, and the scholars, participants, and students. Friends. I am very much happy to participate at this webinar. on synthesis and catalytic applications of supported method nanoparticles being organized by the ed department of chemistry i congratulate the department for having selected this suitable topic for discussion and deliberation the webinar is current more relevant and highly useful to the scientific world and also i congratulate our behalf of our college as our principal to dr ibrahim ta The faculty member of each department of chemistry is selected by the Indian National Science Academy to deliver the Distinguished Scientist Award for the year 2021-22. Congratulations, Sir Imran Khan. And catalysts in chemistry: any substance that increases the rate of reaction without itself being consumed. Nanoparticles have a very high surface area to volume ratio and make excellent catalysts. Self-cleaning window. Window pans have nanoparticle coatings. Metal nanoparticles are created from nanoscale matter containing both organic and inorganic materials combined with various metals. This also includes transition metals, semiconductors, alkali metals. The metal part of the nanoparticles plays a great role in the use of metal nanoparticles as green catalysts due to their large surface and the bulk material. And I take this opportunity to thank our respected principal and their and faculty members of the PG and the Department of Chemistry and the distinguished resource person for having provided this platform to impart knowledge about the synthesis and catalytic applications of supported metal nanoparticles. I appreciate the faculty, the organizer of the BG and the Science Department, Chemistry, who associate themselves with dedication and supporting to organize this wonderful webinar. I wish the webinar a great success. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your cheerful words. Uh, I can see uh, Dr. Swarna Lata there from Emma's University. Hi, Swarna. She is also a friend of ours. We are all in the same batch. Okay. Now we move on to the next uh, session. Uh, it's time to introduce our chief guest. Once again, a warm good afternoon to Honorable Secretary T. S. Patur Abbani, sir, respected committee members, respected principal, respected vice principal, respected research and UG head, IQAC coordinator, respected chief guest, and my dear friends, sir. A warm good afternoon to all. It's my privilege to introduce our chief guest. Dr. M. Shankar, lecturer in physical chemistry from Cardiff Catalysis Institute, United Kingdom. I'm happy to say that he belongs to Thirunelveli and is a good friend of mine. 
and uh, he obtained his bachelor's degree from St. Xavier's College, Trinalveli, and master's degree from the American College, Madurai, Tamil Nadu. He got his uh, doctoral degree in heterogeneous catalysis from National Chemical Laboratory, Pune, India. He moved to Cardiff Catalysis Institute as postdoctoral research associate. In 2011, he was awarded the prestigious Marie Curie Intra-European Research Fellowship to pursue his uh, research at uh, Utrecht University, Netherlands. It is one of the oldest uni universities there. In 2014, he moved back to the Cardiff Catalysis Institute and started his independent research group with a university research fellowship. Since 2019, he has been working as lecturer in physical chemistry at Cardiff University. He has published more than 65 research papers in peer-reviewed journals, including Nature Catalysis, Nature Communications, Angwan Chemi, ACS Nano, Chemical Reviews, Chemical Society Reviews, and more. He, is, he has got three international patents. He has uh, been awarded the Junior and Senior Research Fellowship in 2002 by the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, India. He has been selected in the Wells Crucible, which is an award-winning program. It's a pleasure to have such a person amidst us for delivering lecture. And uh, without taking much time, I hand over the session to Dr. Shankar, please. Shankar, the platform is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sabita, for your uh, kind invitation. And uh, and thank you all for um, for this great occasion because I miss Trinalveli. I was um, I visited Trinalveli back in 2018, if I'm not wrong. It's been like three years. And uh, my parents live not very far from Sadakatula College. Okay, so it's a great pleasure seeing you all. Okay, another thing is, I was I was just recollecting when 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 we are when you are introducing me, just many thoughts came into my mind, you know, about uh, my very young teenage, you know. Um, prior to St. Xavier's College, I studied in St. John's Higher Secondary School. That's where I did my higher secondary school, and I was a strong sub. Obviously, I was a strong supporter of St. John's College because that's associated with uh, St. John's Higher Secondary School, and we used to have cricket intercollege cricket matches and. Uh, Sadakatullah used to beat us like anything. I used to be furious with Sadakatullah team, cricket team. They used to beat like two or three times. It was few memorable time, and I still remember those days. So yeah, thank you, thank you for reminding me my you know young teenage days. It's a great pleasure. Um, without taking much time, I will I will start my lecture. Mm, right, one second, please. Even after one year, technology is still a nightmare. <laughs> right. Can can you all see my slides? Yep. Sabita, can you can you just say? Is it okay? It's visible, Jashanka. You can make it as a full screen. You yeah. can give play. Yeah. 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 Ah, perfect. That's fine. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about uh, supported metal nanoparticles. And that's... I've been doing this research since 2007, since I moved to Cardiff. And uh, oops, this is my university main building. And this is where my office is. Okay, this is the main building. And it doesn't look like this all throughout the year, unlike Trinal Valley, only you can get sun only for three or four months. So you are lucky. Okay, so and this Cardiff University, Cardiff town um, or city rather, it's a it's a capital city of Wales. Okay, Wales is an independent, not independent. Wales is a country on its own right within the United Kingdom. So you have Wales, you have England. This is England, and this is Scotland, and this part is Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. So all these four countries form United Kingdom, okay? England is the largest uh, country and Wales is a different country. And the language in Wales is Welsh. It's, uh, although we speak English predominantly, the native language is Welsh. And this is the name, a single word. Huh? This is one of the longest words or uh, single name in the world. And this is the name of a town in Wales. 
So, right, without going into the history, uh, Cardiff Catalysis Institute is a center of excellence since 2008 onwards, because we have been doing catalysis research for a very long time. And catalysis, I will come back to it a bit later, what is catalysis and um, why nanoparticles are very good catalysts, okay? So we are part of a uh, part of the School of Chemistry within Cardiff University, and we have 90 to 95 research staff, 15 academic members. These are dynamic numbers, you know, these change a lot. And our area of expertise is um, mainly heterogeneous catalysis, homogeneous catalysis, biocatalysis, and computational chemistry. These are our um, strong uh, research areas within Cardiff Catalysis Institute. And within the UK, Cardiff Catalysis Institute is the best research institute for heterogeneous catalysis research. We have almost a lot of uh, infrastructure for synthesizing catalysts, characterizing catalysts, testing catalysts. So we have um, most of the facilities in the UK. Now, right, what's a catalyst? <clears throat> a catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of the reaction, okay? So, uh, for example, if, 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 uh, oh, sorry. If, if this is an, so if this is an uncatalytic reaction, okay? A catalytic reaction takes a different pathway where the activation energy is much lowered compared to an uncatalyzed reaction, okay? Sorry, it should be, it should start from here, okay? So this activation energy for an uncatalyzed reaction reduces for a catalytic reaction. Okay, so I heard that you know a uh, lot of undergraduates are there in the, um, in, in the audience. So for the uh, benefit of undergraduates, a catalyst is a substance that speeds up a reaction. It changes the kinetics of a reaction. It doesn't change the thermodynamics of a reaction, okay? So if a reaction, it's thermodynamically not possible, a catalyst cannot make it happen. Let's be very clear about it, okay? Um, I, I normally, in my undergraduate lectures, I normally give a very good analogy, which is, uh, um, you know, uh, I used to feed my son when he was like a year and a half old. It's a nightmare. Feeding a one-year-old boy is a nightmare. He runs all around the flat or house, so you have to run behind him and feed him. But if you keep an iPad in front of him, he sits in front of the iPad and you can feed him very quickly. So if without that iPad, it takes a lot of time to feed him. It takes a lot of energy to feed him. But when you keep an iPad in front of him, you can feed the same meal in 10, 15 minutes and you don't have to run around and spend your energy. But he doesn't eat the iPad, he eats the food. So this iPad acts as a catalyst to reduce the time and energy of a reaction, chemical reaction. This is what happens. So when, when, when you want to reduce the time of a chemical reaction, the, you use a catalyst, okay? Catalyst does many, 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 many things, okay? To start with, it, it absorbs or it, it provides some space or um, some, some room for the reactants to come and absorb, and they react and they desorb. So this is the purpose of a catalyst, and this is a very crude or, or very approximate definition of a catalyst. There are many different definitions. Now, why we should bother about catalyst? Don't worry about this particular complex slide, okay? This is a, a representation of a petroleum refinery. What is a petroleum refinery? You just start with a, you know, you start with uh, crude oil and you perform all these reactions and what you get is chemical, fuel, other chemical compounds for day-to-day -day activities. For example, you know, your polymer, uh, what you are using as, um, you know, pet bottles, your Coke bottle or Pepsi bottles, you know, they are called PET bottles, P-E-T, polyethylene terephthalate. Okay, that ethylene comes from, from a petroleum refinery. Thalic acid, terephthalic acid comes from, uh, from the oxidation of paraxylene. That paraxylene comes from 
um, this petroleum refinery. So not only fuel, you get lots of bulk chemicals from this petroleum refinery. And most of these reactions, chemical reactions, are catalytic reactions. So you need a catalyst to perform this reaction. Just a, it's an approximation. Each arrow represents one chemical reaction or a chemical process. And 90 to 95 percentage of all these processes involve a catalyst. Um, I don't have the precise number, but probably around 70 to 75 percentage of all your chemicals, whatever you are using in your day-to-day -day life, right from your components of your mobile phone, components of your car, components of your you know, uh, clothing. So 80 to 80 or somewhere around 75 to 80 percentage involve a catalytic process, okay? So catalyst is such an important part in our day-to-day -day life. Probably the older audience in this um, in the seminar might remember when we were younger, we used to have a big discussion or debate about debate about acid rain. We used to, you know, read a lot about the potential possibility of acid rain. You know, um, the, the rain which we get typically um, is pure water, but because of heavy pollution, we were thinking we might get acid rain. Nowadays, we don't talk about those acid rain because primarily because of the advancement in catalytic converter, for example. Okay, So back in 20, 30 years before, we used to have diesel engines which used to emit a lot of NOx, oxides of nitrogen, SOx, oxides of sulfur. They used to pollute the environment tremendously and the and, um, and their concentration in our environment increased. And whenever they dissolve in water, for example, rainwater, you form nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So if you, if you dissolve sulfur trioxide, SO3, uh, in water, what you get is sulfuric acid. Why, if you dissolve nitrous oxide um, in water, you get nitric acid. So this had, this was a real danger back in 80s, 70s and 80s, and even some good part of 90s. But we don't talk about this now, primarily because we have a catalytic converter in our diesel engine exhaust. So these catalytic converters convert this NOx and SOx to you know, uh, benign compounds. So they, they help us to reduce these um, emissions. So, so catalysts play an important role in our day-to-day -day life, okay? Not only that, I mean, if you think of, um, say, our current challenges, um, we have global warming, climate change, pollution, lots of waste, plastic waste. So all these challenges, and mainly another, another important aspect is clean water. We need really good clean water for drinking and uh, uh, for um, using at home. So. For getting all those things, we need a lot of catalyst. Okay, so till now, at least till um, say um, early 2000, uh, we used to produce all our chemicals and fuel from petroleum refinery. However, the more we use crude oil, the more carbon dioxide we are going to emit into the atmosphere. Okay, carbon dioxide has some um, uh, you know a negative effect. In, 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 in climate change. So there is a huge debate throughout the world where we are talking about you know, z net zero. That's the um, you know, catchy term nowadays, net zero, which means whatever carbon dioxide we are going to emit, should we need to convert it into useful compounds, number one. Number two, we should reduce carbon dioxide emission. So how are we going to reduce carbon dioxide emission? One option is stop burning organic matter. That's not going to happen because we need organic fuel or synthetic fuel to, to, to run our vehicles, to heat our homes. For example, in a, in a Western country, we need lots of you know, heating during winter. Uh, then we need electricity. We need um, organic matter, organic compounds for creating chemicals or making chemicals. So we need all these things. We cannot say no to them. But 
we should reduce carbon dioxide emission. So what can we do? So what we can do is we can use sustainable feedstock. So if we go back several centuries, nature, nature is brilliant, okay? So for example, it, plants or biomass, they are, the, what is their input? They use carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. They use these three things to produce carbohydrate, okay? So as humans or, or living animals, what they use, they eat biomass, and they produce carbon dioxide and water. So basically this is a circular economy. The waste from animals is being utilized for producing plant. The waste from plant, which is oxygen primarily, uh, the waste from plant is being used by animals. So it's a beautiful cycle, but humans as humans, we don't do this. We take say crude oil from the ground, use it and throw it in the, environment as, as waste. So that's called a linear economy. We should move towards a circular economy. How can we go for, a, uh, how can we go to a circular economy? So we can use waste biomass for producing the same amount of, you know, um, chemicals and fuels uh, from biomass. What is this biomass? This biomass, say for example, after, uh, after our harvest, rice harvest, what you get is, straw, rice straw. In, in Tamil Nadu, we get rice straw. Say, if you go to Northern India, we get wheat straw. So we can use this agriculture waste and convert them into useful compounds. For example, we can, we can convert them into uh, BTX, which is a benzene, toluene, and xylene. So, or we can use, uh, um, you know, glucose or cellulose matter into ethanol and that ethanol can be added and blended into current fuel, or you can upgrade the ethanol to butanol, and butanol can be straight away used as a fuel, liquid fuel in your cars or vehicles. So, so this is absolutely possible, but we need to produce, uh, we need to develop lots of new technologies or catalytic technologies for, for um, converting this waste biomass into useful compounds. So this particular, uh, the refinery is called biorefinery. The previous one is a petroleum refinery where we converted crude oil into useful chemicals. Here we are converting waste biomass into useful chemicals. So this is called biorefinery. So now we know why we need a catalyst because these reactions can happen very, very, very slowly. We need a catalyst to speed up this reaction uh, so that we can get this an, in an industrial scale. Okay. Now, having said that, this is the you know bigger picture. This is what I'm aiming to achieve. And when you want to achieve something very big, first what you have to do is you have to make first small steps. We have to understand certain things at a fundamental level. Okay. So. I will make a big jump from this big picture to a, a very small nano scale, which is I'm going to talk about supported bimetallic nanoparticles, synthesis condition, or how to make this bimetallic nanoparticles. Okay, that's what that's what primarily I'm going to discuss. Don't worry about you know technical terms if you don't understand a few things. It's fine, absolutely fine, because I've been working on this for 15 years and I know this area. When but if you don't understand the intricate details of this research, don't worry about it. There are references in each slide. You can go back to the references and read, or you can read some primary literature, which are like textbooks or, or, or monographs or reviews, okay? And if you still have any um, questions, you are more than welcome to email me. I'm happy to answer a few questions, okay? Um, so these nanoparticles, as you can imagine, this is, a this is assumed to be a, a latest area of research, right? But unfortunately, it is not. Uh, this, is a, this is a cup, a wine cup uh, in British Museum in London, okay? If you shine the light from, from, um, from outside, this cup, wine cup, looks like a green cup, okay? If you shine the light from inside, it looks like an orange or red, whatever 
color. So this is, as you can see, depending on from where you are shining the light, the color of this cup is absolutely different. So this was made in fourth century by Romans, okay? So this cup is called Lycurgus cup. Uh, so this was made in fourth century. And you know what is the reason behind this dichroic behavior or the dichroic means two different colors depending on from where your light source comes. This dichroic behavior is because of small amount of silver and gold nano alloy or bimetallic nanoparticles with the composition of 70 to 30, 70% 70 of silver, 30% of gold, around you know, uh, 50 to 100 nanometers. The size of this um, gold silver nanoparticle is around 50 to 100 nanometers. Let me remind you, when did they make this? They made it in fourth century. So, so it's a very, very, very old technology. Nanotechnology is not a new technology. The term nanotechnology is very new, but the real technology, how to make nanoparticles, how to utilize these nanoparticles, this is pretty much well known long back. Okay, so a similar example would be this kind of um, uh, China clay, where the color, this, this uh, pink or rose color comes from gold nanoparticles, okay? Um, uh, this comes from very small gold nanoparticles. So gold nanoparticles should be in the range of 10 to 15 nanometers. So again, these are hundreds and hundreds of years before technology, okay? So uh, they used to make this particular gold nanoparticle called colloidal method, using a colloidal method, uh, by reducing gold three plus using tin as ox, uh, reducing agent, okay? So as I said, this is a very old technology. Now making nanoparticles is a very old technology. However, we, we, we used to make gold nano, um, sorry, we used to think gold as a noble metal. That's why, um, you know, we, we love gold ornaments. Why we are not wearing any, you know, iron, iron, based rings or iron based chain uh, you know we don't use those things because they oxidize they oxidize to form iron oxide which is nothing but more or less rust so they get rusted what is rusting it's nothing but interaction of the metal with the surface oxygen or atmospheric oxygen and they get oxidized because they are reactive but gold doesn't do that you can't see gold getting rusted that's why we use gold as a um, as an ornamental metal. Uh, that's why we love gold. Um, and 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 in terms of chemistry, it's a dump metal. We really don't like gold because it doesn't have any reactivity. It's called noble metal, so it doesn't react. So it's not a very interesting metal. However, this is what people thought until 1980s. But Professor Haruta from Tokyo Institute of Technology back in 1987 proposed that gold nanoparticles, if you make the same gold in a nanoscale, it can be a very good catalyst. It, is, it, it can act as a fantastic catalyst. It can react readily with oxygen. So at the same time, Professor Hutchings from Cardiff Catalysis Institute, he reported gold can be an interesting catalyst or can be the best catalyst for, you know, polyvinyl, uh, you might have heard about PVC pipes, right? PVC, that's nothing but polyvinyl chloride. That's why it is called PVC, polyvinyl chloride. The monomer for that polyvinyl chloride is vinyl chloride. So how do they make vinyl chloride? They react acetylene and hydrochloric acid. So this reaction is called P, uh, monomer, I mean, uh, vinyl chloride production, VCM vinyl chloride monomer production. Acetylene plus hydrochloric acid giving vinyl chloride. This for this reaction, gold is the best catalyst. That's what Cardiff, um, Professor Hutchings from Cardiff University proposed um, back in 1985. So these two major discoveries started the, the boom 
in, in, in gold-based catalyst research. Okay? This was the starting point, 1987, Haruta's uh, gold nanoparticle for carbon monoxide oxidation and Professor Hutchings gold catalyzed vinyl chloride monomer production. So this started the, this area of research. Now, the most interesting part of this research is don't worry about these numbers, don't worry about this tech, um, technical terms, just, just try to understand this x-axis is a particle size, particle size of the metal, okay? Particle size of the metal. Here, turnover frequency is nothing but uh, a catalytic activity, okay? Now, when you reduce the particles, for a platinum on ceria catalyst, platinum is the metal, ceria is the support. When you reduce the particle size from, from right-hand side to left-hand side, you are reducing the particle size. When you reduce the particle size, the turnover frequency reduces. For gold, when you reduce the particle size, the turnover frequency increases, as you can see. So this means when you reduce the particle size, your catalytic activity increases. So this, this is an interesting, uh, you know, uh, uh, observation. Now, this is monometallic catalyst. What, sorry. This is monometallic. What do I mean by monometallic? Only one metal is there. Gold is the only metal in this catalyst. Now, back in 1970s and probably around 80s, um, John Sinfeld from Exxon Mobil in the US, they were working on bimetallic catalyst. When you combine two metals, the catalytic activity of this um, materials in, increases tremendously. So they were doing in Exxon Mobil, which is an industrial uh, petrochemical industry. So it's an industrial research. So they don't publish the articles in, a, in an open journal, but in Cardiff, we, we did the, almost the same kind of research, but for a totally different reaction, which is the oxidation of alcohol to ketone. So this is a secondary alcohol. This is a ketone. And, and most of the chemistry students who are here, you know how to oxidize an alcohol. Okay? So there are primary alcohol goes to aldehyde, secondary alcohol goes to ketone. So, so this oxidation, is well known in organic, synthetic organic chemistry. But what kind of oxidizing agent do you use? You use stoichiometric oxidizing agent. For example, potassium permanganate, chromate, so periodate. So these kind of oxidants you use. What's the problem with this kind of oxidants? For every mole of product you produce, you produce equimolar mixture of waste. So you produce a lot of waste during this oxidation process. Now, as, as, you, as I was talking in the, in the introduction, we need to reduce waste. We cannot keep on producing lots of waste. So what we need is an oxidant which is benign, which is environmentally friendly. So for example, if you use oxygen or air, if you use this um, oxygen as, as an oxidant, that would be fantastic because what you produce is water, nothing but water as the byproduct. Okay, so for what is the problem associated with oxygen? Oxygen is a stable molecule. Now, if you want to use oxygen as an oxidant, what you have to do is you have to activate this oxygen. For activating this oxygen, you need a catalyst. A catalyst can activate an oxygen. As I told you before, gold nanoparticle is a fantastic catalyst for activating oxygen. Okay. Now, uh, what we did in our, um, in our research, we combined gold and palladium to form gold palladium bimetallic nanoparticle. So when you combine these two metals, your catalytic activity increases by several fold. So this is an interesting discovery back in 2006. This is when I started my postdoctoral research in Cardiff. Now, that was the first primary result. Then we started how to control the particle size, how to control the composition, how to control the nanostructure of this uh, bimetallic nanoparticle. That was the question I was asked. I mean, that was my first piece of research. 
So we developed lots of things. Before I start any, before I go into the details, what I'm going to show you is an interesting slide, which is we prepared lots of this gold and the palladium bimetallic catalyst. You have one, two, both metals supported on titania. And we tested these catalysts for a number of reactions. And these are the catalytic activity. As I said, don't worry about the technical details of this um, plot. What you have to remember is just by changing the way you prepare your catalyst, you can tune the catalytic activity. For example, this is um, the same gold palladium on titania catalyst. It, it gives a catalytic activity of 16. The same gold palladium on titania prepared by a slightly different method gives 154 activity. Uh, I'm not going into the, the units and um, all those details. But what I'm trying to say is just by changing the way you prepare your catalyst has enormous effect on the catalytic activity, right? So for example, you make curry at your, at your home, right? Every, every home makes different curry. It has unique aroma and unique taste, although the recipe is the same, right? So you, you, you make it in such a way because you add ingredients in a slightly different order, the way you heat, the, the time you use for cooking, that differs and that has some effect on the resultant taste and smell. Yeah. Similarly, when you prepare a catalyst, any small change in your catalytic, uh, uh, any change in the preparation condition changes the property of these nanoparticles and in turn, it changes the uh, catalytic properties. So that, that's what I want to you know, highlight. What we, what we have done after that was why? Why there is a change in the catalytic activity? Why there is a you know, change in the property? Those things we do in our lab, okay? So this is the first way of preparing the catalyst. You take gold chloride, you take palladium chloride, you add your support, you, you know, heat it, cook it, you know, 450 degrees C, you heat this catalyst, what you get is a supported gold palladium catalyst. Now, um, now what happens is this is a you know transmission electron microscope uh, analysis of these particles. So these are small particles. Okay, these are very very small particles, and these are catalytically very active. As I told you, gold nanoparticle gold particles should be very small to be catalytically active. Whereas these are large particles. I mean, large in terms of, you know, uh, uh, it's a subjective term because still the particle size is 60 to 100 nanometers. They are, from catalytic perspective, they are absolutely useless. What we need is one to five nanometers. That's the particle size range we are talking about, okay? So these are catalytically very active, one to five nanometers. Whereas these are catalytically inactive. So we don't want these large particles. What we need is a very small particle. That is one challenge. Another challenge, as I told you, we are preparing gold palladium on titania or gold palladium catalyst. Now, if you analyze, this is, this is, this is the trans, um, scanning electron microscope pic picture of a gold palladium, supported gold palladium catalyst. Whereas this, uh, I mean, this particular, uh, can you see bright spots? These bright spots are metal nanoparticles, okay? These bright spots are metal nanoparticles. So again, this is also a metal nanoparticle. This, this is a huge particle, micro, one micron size particle. These are a few hundred nanometer particles, okay? Now, as I told you, this is a gold palladium catalyst and this spongy kind of thing is nothing but titania, okay? This, this dull spongy kind of place, this is titania. Now, this large piece of uh, metal, when you analyze this metal by a, um, um, electron diffraction or some other technique, what you get is only gold. 
there is no palladium. There is absolutely no palladium. But as I told you, this is a gold palladium particle. Where did the palladium go? So that's an interesting question. So we did lots of research with different kinds of metals. So these are, as you can see, 50 nanometer particles, 50 nanometer gold, uh, gold palladium particle. This is five nanometer gold palladium particle. And using advanced you know, microscopic technique, what you can see is you can literally see atom by atom. With, with, uh, with the current advancement, with the current microscope, what you can see is literally atom by atom of, of, of this nanoparticle. So what we found was the small particles are dominated by uh, palladium and these large particles are dominated by gold. As you can see, this, this is the particle and this is the atom by atom you know, uh, analysis of this nanoparticle. As you can see, this blue color purple this this these are gold sorry palladium particles okay and this bright green color that's gold so as you can see a five nanometer particle predominantly is palladium rich whereas a 20 nanometer particle is predominantly gold rich now another thing is another aspect is um, the nanostructure for example, this blue color inside, that's gold. Oops, sorry. This is gold. And the outside of this, I will try to. So this part, this is this blue part, this is gold. And outside, as you can see, the green shell kind of thing, that's palladium. So this is a core shell structure, gold core and a palladium shell structure. And this part, this red color is nothing but titania. So this is a gold palladium supported on titania catalyst where the gold takes the core, whereas the palladium takes the shell. So this is a gold uh, core palladium shell, core shell structure. So now, there are three structural parameters. One is a particle size, next one is composition and nanostructure. How to control, how to control all these parameters during catalyst synthesis? Material scientists have developed a number of methodologies to control the particle size or uh, how to prepare these nanoparticles. Okay. Um, the one very well-known methodology is a colloidal method, which is you take your metal precursor, which is gold three plus or palladium three plus, you add polyvinyl alcohol, which is a stabilizer ligand or a polymer, polyvinyl alcohol. The name itself says that it's a polymer. So it's a polyvinyl alcohol. You add polyvinyl alcohol to this gold and palladium precursor and you add sodium borohydride, which is a reducing agent when you reduce gold and palladium three plus and two plus, what you get is gold palladium nanoparticles. And you can control the particle size because of this polyvinyl alcohol. What, what, that, what it does is, um, one second, it should be possible. Sorry. So this is a metal nanoparticle. And this metal nanoparticle is surrounded by this polymeric ligands. These polymeric ligands form a, a protective shell around these nanoparticles. Once it forms a protective shell, it wouldn't agglomerate. What is agglomeration? Two small particles come together to form one large particle. This is a process by which you get very large particles. Okay, so we stop this agglomeration by adding a polyvinyl alcohol, which is a polymeric stabilizing ligand. Now, when you analyze the transmission electron microscopy of this uh, nanoparticles, what you get is all the metal nanoparticles are between one to nine nanometers. They, they, uh, you can see there is no metal particle above nine nanometers. So, um, so, this is a very good methodology for preparing very small nanoparticles by adding a stabilizer ligand like polyvinyl alcohol. A number of uh, stabilizer ligands can be used for, uh, for example, polyvinyl pyridine. 
and so in some places they use um, citric acid in some places they use ascorbic acid ascorbic acid is nothing but vitamin c so so a number of these kind of ligands can be used to prepare metal nanoparticles the composition it's almost reversed now all the small particles are gold rich all the large particles are palladium rich reverse trend of what we discussed before now what what i developed after this was um, by adding excess of hydrochloric acid uh, during the reaction what what happens is you can control the particle size and positive particle composition so you prepare the same catalyst in water you can see large particles these bright spots are large particles the top rows are scanning electron microscope whereas the bottom part bottom three are transmission electron microscopic images of these particles as you can see this is a 15 nanometer scale so one fifth so these are 10 nanometer particles these bright spots are 10 nanometer particles as you can see when you add more hydrochloric acid what you see is very very small particle these are one nanometer particles okay uh, i can show you if you can see this these are very tiny particles compared to this one this one is a relatively large particle i would say 10 or 6 or 5 to 6 nanometers whereas these are 1 nanometer particles okay by adding by adding hydrochloric acid this kind of large chunks of material is not here you can't see the very bright spots here so this is a this is a method of controlling the particle size by adding hydrochloric acid this is again this is a two nanometer particle as you can see um say for example this is like two or three nanometers uh, two or three gold palladium nanometer particle two two to three nanometer particles and if you can analyze the gold content and palladium content it is it is palladium rich whereas when you add hydrochloric acid into the system what you produce is much much smaller particle this is a very interesting particle whereas it is gold rich particle so you can count hundreds and hundreds of particles to come up with a more statistically relevant numbers so what you see is by adding hydrochloric acid you can control the particle size you can control the composition now just by doing calcination or heating the catalyst under oxidizing atmosphere what you get is a core shell structure so this is a, a core shell structure this core is gold whereas the shell is a palladium shell so this shell is a palladium shell whereas the core is gold core here you can see alternating bright and dull spots that means this is a random alloy structure this is not a core shell structure this is a random alloy structure so by reducing the catalyst under high temperature using um, hydrogen you can produce random alloy structure whereas calcination results in core shell structure so again i go back to the first slide um, where where i explained you know uh, different activities now what we found was you know why such difference in activity some are core shell structure some are random alloy structure some has compositional variations some do not have compositional variation so this this kind of uh, very structural differences are there and how we can control the structure how we can use the catalytic activity that's all um, i wanted to discuss on the synthesis of this nanoparticle based catalyst okay now um i will not go into the heat treatment part okay the next one is uh, say when you are performing an oxidation reaction benzyl alcohol it's one of the simplest reactions you can perform in a in a research laboratory you take benzyl alcohol you oxidize this is a primary alcohol so what you get is a aldehyde now this is okay i understand this is an oxidation reaction however you always get toluene in the react uh, as one of the products this is not an oxidation product 
So we did lots of research and we found that this is a result of a disproportionation reaction, something like your Canizoro reaction, for example. What is a Canizoro reaction? So you take two moles of benzaldehyde and it disproportionates to give one mole of benzoic acid and one mole of benzyl alcohol. So it's a very similar sort of kind of uh, uh, disproportionation reaction. You take two moles of benzyl alcohol, one mole of toluene is formed and one mole of benzaldehyde is formed, okay? So this happens irrespective of whether you have oxygen or not, okay? However, oxidation reaction also happens, okay? So this is the oxidation, pure oxidation reaction. This is pure disproportionation reaction. Both these reactions happens at the catalyst surface. How to control? So what we did, we changed the support of this uh, material. And what we found was, you know, toluene, which we don't want, we have reduced their selectivity from say 20 to 30 percentage to 0.5 percentage by changing the support to magnesium oxide or zinc oxide. So we found lots of interesting things, which I'm not going to go into the details. What we found was based on this information and several interesting studies, what we found was, you know, the active site for this particular reaction, what do I, I'm using a terminology called active site. What is an active site? If you remember my first um, introduction, in, in my introduction, I said something like, you know, the, the reactants come and absorb on the catalyst surface, they react and they desorb. That, that place on the catalyst where these molecules come and absorb, that's called an active site, okay? So every catalyst need an active site then only this catalyst can be called as an active catalyst. So this active site, we need to find out. Finding out the active site in a heterogeneous catalysis system is very, very, very difficult. It's not easy because it's, it's impossible to characterize this catalyst and there are so many complex reactions happens at this catalyst surface. So it's, it's nearly impossible, but still what we managed was for the oxidation reaction or for the oxidation reaction, metal site or metal nanoparticle is the active site. For the disproportionation reaction, metal support is the active site. Now, once we know what is an active site, we can tune that active site. Once we can tune the active site, we can manipulate the rate of the reaction. Once you can manipulate the rate of the reaction, you can control the selectivity of the products. So, so this is a, interesting you know method by which you can control the selectivity of the products and uh, i will go into this one very briefly so as i told you uh, you know we are using petrol and diesel okay these petrol and diesel they come from crude oil what we need is a sustainable source of fuel one methodology is to con control or convert this lignocellulosic biomass. What do I mean by lignocellulosic biomass? Say you are, um, uh, for example, agriculture waste, your straw, agri um, rice straw or wheat straw or your municipal waste, they are all lignocellulosic biomass. You can convert this lignocellulosic biomass into glucose. Why they are called lignocellulosic biomass? There are three components in this biomass. One is uh, uh, cellulose, other one is hemicellulose, the other one is lignin. So these three components form lignocellulosic biomass. If you take any wood in your, in your office, in your uh, tree, whatever it is, it contains these three components, cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. So when you have these three components, that's called lignocellulosic biomass. You convert this lignocellulosic biomass into glucose and glucose to hydroxymethyl furfuraldehyde and hydroxymethyl furfuraldehyde to levulinic acid, gamma valerolactone, and this can be used as fuel, okay? So don't worry about all these chemical names. Don't worry about this arrow. What we need is this transformation, levulinic acid to gamma valerolactone. This is, this is levulinic acid. This is gamma valerolactone. You can get this from waste biomass, and this can be used as fuel or chemical application. 
So for this transformation, we need a catalyst. Okay. So we developed a catalyst, a bimetallic gold palladium on titania catalyst, where when, when the monometallic gold and palladium catalyst, they were not active. This is catalytic activity. So when you combine them in the bimetallic catalyst, it is superbly active. So just by adding two metals together at a nanoscale, at a nanoparticle, you can get a very active catalyst. Okay. So we, we can confirm that gold and palladium are in this nanoparticle. This is a one nanometer particle. This is a state of the art microscopic image of a nanoparticle. You can see this is an atom. This, this bright spot is a gold atom. This dull spot is a palladium atom. You can literally see atoms. That's the power of a aberration corrected scanning transmission electron microscope. Okay? So these particles are in the range 1.5 nanometer. The mean particle size of this uh, particle is around 1.5 nanometer. So forget about all these things. So what I what I'm trying to say is just by adding gold and palladium at a nanoparticle scale, nanoscale, you can get a very active catalyst that can convert livulinic acid to gamma valerolactone. In a second example, by adding palladium to ruthenium, this is another kind of uh, 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 nanoparticle, bimetallic nanoparticle, you can get a better selectivity for, for the product of interest, okay? Don't worry about all these things. Ah, this is, um, this is the ruthenium palladium nanoparticle. This is a two nanometer, real two nanometer particle. And this is, in this particle, you have palladium map. These are palladium atoms. These are palladium atoms, and these are ruthenium atoms. So these are ruthenium atoms, and these are palladium atoms. So you can see atom by atom inside this nanoparticle using um, X-ray energy dispersive spectroscopy combined with scanning transmission electron microscope. Okay. So uh, I don't want to go into the details. So that's. So what, what I have shown you is by making these nanoparticles, bimetallic nanoparticles, you can convert some components of your waste biomass into useful compounds like um, fuel or, or chemicals, okay? Another important waste compound is glycerol. You might have heard or read about biodiesel, right? So what, biodiesel can be produced very easily in your, even in your kitchen. For example, you are using lots of oil, right? Coconut oil or, or, um, or uh, groundnut oil. So you're using lots of cooking oils. So these cooking oils, you can transesterify these cooking oils using sodium hydroxide and methanol, and you can produce biodiesel. And the byproduct of this biodiesel is glycerol, glycerine. You might have heard about this term glycerin. That's nothing but glycerol. Okay. So this glycerol is a byproduct in biodiesel production. And when you want to convert this glycerol into useful compounds, you can con uh, these propane diols are very important precursors for making polymers. Okay, for your uh, you know, as I told you, polyethylene terephthalate. You need ethylene glycol for that. Where is ethylene glycol? Yeah. Here, so you need ethylene glycol for making PET bottles. Okay, so so these glycols or or diols are very important uh, precursors for making polymers and other compounds. Now, from glycerol, you can convert, uh, you can make these um, uh, diols. So again, we um, one of my students, uh, Susanna, she convert, she developed bimetallic catalyst for converting this glycerol to useful. Um, diols. Okay. Uh, then what I want to give an overview is we can develop lots of nanoparticle based catalysts. And just by developing nanoparticle ca based catalysts, what the challenge is to understand what causes this nanoparticle to be active and what causes this nanoparticle to be selective, what causes this nanoparticle to be stable under a catalytic condition. So how we can tune this um, structure of this nanoparticle so that we can get a better catalyst. So this, this kind of 
scientific information is absolutely crucial to develop new catalyst why do we need new catalyst we need new catalyst to convert some of the you know waste we generate every day to useful compounds or some of the renewable compounds like biomass to fuel or chemicals okay so uh i will not go into the details and i would like to thank my students especially susana and um, the li fang and um, claire for for doing some of this work uh, they finished their phd and some of my funding agencies epsrc mary curie and cardiff university and so these are some of my collaborators during this research and thank you all for listening Thank you, Shankar. Uh, thank you. It was a nice lecture. Thank you. So uh, we are fascinated to hear the designing of the catalyst using uh, bimetallic uh, uh, catalyst and uh, its application. Uh, by sure, in future, many of the researchers may carry out the transformation of lignocellulosic biomass to fuel using these uh, varying compositions of metals. Yeah. So. It is a motivating one for the research people. Uh, now we I'm, can have the questioning session. Yeah, that's fine. But no, don't worry about you know complicated things or it's not complicated. It's it's not a you know what shall I say uh, jargons for example uh, some of the terminologies which I use. Don't worry about that. The key message is we need catalysts to convert renewable sources to useful compounds. That's the key message. And uh, if if you can develop. it's it's fantastic and nanoparticles are fantastic materials for uh, converting this waste of materials into useful compounds because they are very good catalyst sure i am happy so to answer the, questions yeah the participants can pose their questions in the chat box and also you can raise hands so that i can unmute for asking question Yeah, I have a question from Swarna. Yes. Hello, Shankar. Nice to see you. Pleasure. Uh, Good to see you. Uh, for uh, on behalf of the students, uh, let me ask one thing. You just clarify it. Tuning the active sites in the sense whether it is uh, depends only on the surface area, number of uh, active sites, or uh, some other thing responsible for the catalytic enhancement. See, there are a number of uh, particularly for uh, bimetals. It's a complicated question. That's a good question, actually. <laughs> um, um, see, first, what we should know is what is the active site. Okay, that itself is a big challenge. It, it's an enormous challenge. Okay, finding out what is the active site of a catalyst is an enormous challenge. Now, once we know that what is the active site. then we should know how to tune the active site can we say for example uh, this ruthenium catalyst 1% ruthenium on titanium catalyst this is an amazing catalyst uh, it's an absolutely active catalyst it's a very active catalyst but it's not a selective catalyst so we found that you know some sites of this ruthenium nanoparticles are very active rather more active more than what we need so we added palladium to that particle so this palladium blocks certain sites of this uh, ruthenium nanoparticle so that the selectivity is controlled okay. so it it reduces the rate of the reaction while reducing the rate of the reaction it it increases the selectivity of the product so i cannot give you a generic answer because there is no generic answer it depends on the catalytic system it depends on the reaction it depends on what you want to achieve okay so if you want to achieve more activity the best strategy is to find out the active site and increase the number of active site okay so if you want to increase increase the selectivity find the active site of the um reaction that is leading towards the byproduct and kill that active site 
you can you can increase the selectivity so so there are different things okay so the fundamental understanding of the active site is very fascinating so when we work particularly with biometallic cactus we have to much worry about the interfaces yes so for example so for some catalytic reactions the interfacial site is very important the metal support interfacial site okay so uh, for example the i told you about the toluene reaction right the toluene reaction the active site is a metal support interface what do i mean by metal support so um now uh, one second now this is a um, support and this is a nanoparticle okay so this is metal and this is support and this site that is called interfacial site and this interfacial site is very important for a number of reactions and again i i skip those slides we we can tune this interfacial sites by um, tuning the you know heat treatment that's what we published in nature catalysis last year if you do only a reduction uh, that's you what you see is uh, something called smsi you might have heard about it strong metal support interaction the support goes and covers the metal nanoparticle okay you can control this by doing some other heat treatment Okay, thank you, thank you so much. It's really nice and good to see you all. Thank you, Sabita, ma'am, for the opportunity. Ah, uh, thank you, Swarna, ma'am. And another question from Doctor Abileka: Do we have any handling hazard with these bimetallic catalysts? Uh, it depends on which metal are you talking about. Okay, so for example, um, every every chemical has has um, some element of hazard, uh, hazardous nature, and the best thing would be. Uh, if you are buying this chemical from a from sigma aldrich okay you always go for material safety data sheet msds that material safety data sheet should give you what are all the hazards um, um potential hazards in using that chemical okay for in my case i am using gold palladium supported on titania and i am using only one weight percentage so if i if i take 100 grams of that catalyst that contains only 1 gram of metal 99 percentage is titania so whatever hazards uh, associated with titania is is going to predominate this material okay at the same time if you are using nickel nanoparticles for example you might have heard about rane nickel that's a pretty nasty stuff so if you if you make very Uh, porous nickel nanoparticles or pure nickel nanoparticle they can catch fire immediately pyrophoric material so it again depends on which material you are talking about gold palladium it's pretty standard it's not a big um, there is no not much big problem in handling gold palladium Great, thank you shankar and another question is give some important from dr billions raven uh, give some uh, In the chat box, wait a minute. Yeah, uh, uh, bimetallic. We want to hear some important bimetallic. Yeah. Yeah, uh, bimetallic. I mean, I have been working on this uh, gold palladium system for about now ten years. So gold palladium is well known for hydrogenation or hydrogenolysis, and I developed something called ruthenium palladium system in my Marie Curie fellowship. That's that's an, an another amazing system. okay so the, uh, there are a number of uh, bimetallic systems reported in the literature uh, for me i am more interested in ruthenium palladium and gold palladium system for hydrogenation or hydrogenolysis reactions and there are a number of um, uh, nickel based bimetallic systems are available in in the literature so if you go into the literature for a particular reaction you need a particular catalyst composition So one of the question is, what about uh, the surface plasma resonant bands for bimetallic nanoparticles compared with single nanoparticles? That's an interesting. So Dr. Billy Raven, he wants to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an interesting uh, research. Actually, 
we tried actually with because gold can give some surface plasma resonance um, uh, can give but bimetallic we tried and we haven't done much on the surface plasma resonance and i don't have more data to discuss that particular aspect for bimetallic atlas but it's an interesting area of research how the surface plasma enhanced by adding the second metal to this uh, gold or or for that matter any nanoparticle there will be some effect but again it depends on the second metal it depends on how it affects the uh, first metal there are a number of possibilities available but i don't have that right now with me sorry thank you shankar for your uh, patient answering no it's it's interesting so, i mean because it's a very you know wide uh, audience the, 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 the expertise is pretty wide so i don't have much expertise in say physics for example or 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 biology so my expertise is very narrow in the sense i work on catalysis or chemistry and uh, surface studies yeah sure many comments uh, about your uh, lecture they are giving good comments thank you thank you so much it's a um, great pleasure uh thank you shankar thank you for the informative lecture my great pleasure um, principal sir and uh, we can have one last question muttu chudar kodi rajaram which one among the coarse and randomly allowing bimetallic nanoparticles are predominant uh, see it all depends on the energy of the system if if it is a very high energy particle it's not stable okay so at the end of the day the low energy particles are stable so if you if you heat the if you heat the bimetallic nanoparticles in the presence of oxygen what you form is a uh, coarse shell structure because you form a palladium oxide and this palladium oxide has a higher surface energy compared to uh, gold zero so that's why it comes on the shell okay so uh, uh, if you if you reduce the particle for example if you heat the bimetallic nanoparticles in the presence of hydrogen then what you form what you form is a um, random alloy structure gold zero and palladium zero once you form gold zero and palladium zero you form a random alloy structure so it all depends on what kind of conditions you are using for preparing this nanoparticles thank you once uh, once again for your uh, answer shankar principal sir shall we move on to the next session is yes, thank you sir so i request uh, dr uh, brilliant raven assistant professor pg and uh, research department of chemistry to deliver the vote of thanks sir please thank you sir then thank you okay honorable secretary i'll got uh, ts fatu rabani sir respected committee members uh, respected dignitaries respected professors from our college sadakatullah appa college and other colleges dear students warm and pleasant good afternoon to all it's my privilege to propose word of thanks uh, gratitude is not only greatest of virtues but the parents of all the others so in this regard i hold heartily thank our secretary algot ts fatu rapani sir for his engagement to arrange such a webinar sir thank you sir i thank all the committee members for their support i extend my gratitude to our principal dr m mohammed sadiq sir who always guides us to organize such a webinars and other programs thank you sir i thank our vice principal dr s m a sayed mohammed kaja sir who supports us in our works all the works um thank you sir i am grateful to dr a sayed mohammed sir research and our head department of chemistry and iqac coordinator who is always there to help us and guide us thank you very much sir my sincere thanks to dr m um shankar who has accepted our invitation among in his busy schedule thank you sir um your lecture will certainly be an inspiration
to many students to pursue research and update the knowledge about metal nanoparticles, especially by metal nanoparticles. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, I thank my colleagues for their support. I hope, uh, wholeheartedly thank all, all the participants from our college and from various institutions for their support. It's my duty to thank IQC team, uh, Mrs. Rajeshwari and technical team, Mrs. Amina for their excellent job. Thank you, one and all. Um, dear participants, we have posted our webinar feedback link in the chat box. Participants will be given 10 minutes to post their feedback. The participants after filling and submitting will automatically receive each certificate in their email. If any queries, please feel free to contact in Telegram group or email through email ID given in brochure. So thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, thank, thank you, sir. Uh, Samit, uh, I would like to thank everybody, the principal, vice principal, head of the department and um, a PGR um, head. And thank you for inviting me and it's a great pleasure meeting you all. Um, probably when I come to Trinal Valley next time, I will I'll meet you. Hopefully we, we can meet in person. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Sure, sure, sure Sankar. Uh, thank you, Sankar, sir. Our pleasure, Sankar. Thank you. No problem. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Principal, sir, for coming in and uh, raising this occasion. Thank you, ASM, sir. And thank you, I think, uh, Kaja, sir, is there. Thank you, Kaja, sir. You are always uh, there to encourage us and support us. Thank you very much for one and all. Thank, thank you, Shankar. Thank, thank you, Swarna. It's nice to see you here, guys. Pleasure. Sir, shall we wind up, sir? Okay, okay. Principal. Okay, thank okay. you, sir. Thanks. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, dokie. Thank you, Shankar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Sabita. Bye. Uh, bye. Like, bye. Bye. Ah, uh, thank you. Oh, the same. You bye. Participants are requested to post the feedback form. You will be given ten minutes of time. So the Zoom it will be on. The link has been posted in the chat box. You can uh, fill up and get your certificate immediately in your mails. So after submitting the feedback, you can check on your mail for the certificates. So the link is given in the chat box. So it will be given time. So please submit the feedback and get the certificates. Thank you for your participation. And thank you for your questions. And thank you for your comments. Uh, thank you, Sabita, madam. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming, sir. Uh, with your, with your thank permission, you for supporting I can us. leave the meeting. Thank you, madam. Thank you. thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So the feedback link is in the chat box. I have posted it thrice.
participants now you can view the link it is posted in the chat box